from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. Oh my God! Oh, here I go! Oh, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TALK. 1-800-5-800-866. So we receive uh, this little clip here from uh, a newspaper column called Ask Amy. It's a column we've quoted from before. And here is the letter. Sent into the Ask Amy column syndicated by the Chicago Tribune. Thoughtful in Ontario writes, Dear Amy, My fiancé and I are contemplating marriage. We love each other very much. Trust each other completely. And want to start a family. We're both 27 years old and have built lives we're proud of. We found ourselves in the position of questioning what marriage means to us. Neither of us is particularly religious. We value the fact that marriage signifies a lifelong commitment, but as we also believe it's better to divorce than remain in an unhappy marriage. This benefit to marriage also seems somewhat invalidating. We don't want to engage in a meaningless wedding just so we can throw a big party. Do you have any thoughts for us on what marriage can mean for a couple or for a family? Above and beyond religious teachings. Or do you think we're just thinking about this too much? That's thoughtful in Ontario. Now, Amy kind of punted. Rather than answering the question completely, she asked readers to write in and give their thoughts on this subject. But why should we wait for them to write in? For God's sake. Of course, the newspaper is about as antiquated now as the Pony Express. Very quaint. Yes, people are going to write in. They're going to take out a pen and a piece of paper, and they're going to write down their thoughts. Get a 41-cent stamp and put it on an envelope. They're going to jog on down to the local mailbox, drop it in. About three or four days, that letter will show up in Amy's office in Chicago. And she'll take out that uh, letter opener, you know, and open each envelope unfold each piece of paper and read it. And in a few weeks, she'll transcribe these letters, add her own thoughts, and we'll get to find out what people think. That's very quaint. You know, in the Internet era, in the iPod, telecommunications, Facebook, MySpace, YouTube era, this all seems very quaint to me. writing into the advice column and then sitting home and waiting a few weeks to see if your letter gets published. In an era where you can, uh, you know, have a blog and your, uh, your, your diarrhea of the mind can be out there uh, in cyberspace immediately so that anybody can pull it down and read it, should they be stupid enough to care what you think. While we're on the subject of blogs, I digress. Let me just say this to those of you who write blogs. You know, unless your name is Ann Coulter or Pat Buchanan or one of these ranters and ravers who's on cable TV all the time, 
let's just say you're the average person posting on MySpace, Facebook, or just your own blog spot or whatever, what makes you think any of us could care less what you're doing or thinking about? The funniest thing to me about blogs is the people who write them think we care. We don't. We really honestly don't care what you think. I'm amazed that you write that stuff because if I happen to trip over your blog, I'm saying to myself, do I care that this person got his dog shampooed today or that he got it into an argument with a coworker? Do I really care? And the answer, quite honestly, is no, I don't. But yet, if you wanted to post a blog, it would get up there and it would be available to the entire planet a lot sooner than if you wrote a letter to Ask Amy. Sealed it with a kiss, walked down to the mailbox in the rain, dropped it in there. And went home to twiddle your thumbs and wait to see if your letter got picked. Very quaint. I feel like using some of my pan of toothpaste and some saverin coffee and sitting back and just thinking about what it was like back in those days when you would write a letter in. But all right, that was uh, the letter written to Amy from Thoughtful in Ontario, the two people who are remarkably thoughtful at 27, thinking about getting married and wondering what does marriage mean to us and why are we doing this? Let me give my answer, okay? Uh, you're doing this for no good reason, especially if you're the guy part of this couple. <laughs> uh, you're doing it because your friends have done it, because your parents are pressuring you. Even having children, you're probably having children because your parents want to be grandparents, I mean, in most cases, we're doing things because other people tell us to do them. Think about your religion, for example. What is your religion? Well, I'm sure you could pop an answer out. I'm Catholic, I'm Jewish, I'm a born-again Christian, whatever. But seriously speak, I know there are exceptions to this rule. How many of you obtained your religion because your parents just like they whacked off your foreskin before you knew what they were doing. Uh, they, they, they took all this dogma you could not or would not understand and just simply shoved it down your throat. And so now you're a Protestant or a Lutheran or a Mormon or whatever you are because your parents shoved it down your throat. They forced it upon you. The proof that most of us are not very religious no matter what we say, no matter what we tell the pollsters and what have you, is the fact that any time a guy finds a good piece of trim, if she says, I can't marry you if you're not Jewish, poof. We're a Jew. Not realizing that, uh, you know, once you marry her, that's the last time you're getting any good sex. But that's beside the point. I mean, seriously speaking. How religious could you possibly be if you, when you meet and fall in love with somebody, you become another religion overnight? Today, I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, and I, I go to church, and I ask his forgiveness, and I go to the confessional booth, and, yeah, I get down on my knees and take some wafers and stuff, and then suddenly the next day, bam, no pork. Poof, I'm a Jew. Poof, I'm a Mormon. Poof, I'm a Catholic. And what it means is that we don't believe this stuff to begin with. I mean, we, we believe in religion as much as we believe in the stuff we study for the DMV exam, okay? You study for that written DMV exam? Because you need a driver's license to drive. Do you really care about intersections or speed limits or any of that stuff they make you study. No, you couldn't care less. And you'll forget it the minute you get your driver's license. That's why you get all those tickets for things and you say, I, sh I, I, I turned on a red light because I thought it was a right turn on red. I didn't know you have to stop. It's because you never bothered to read the manual when you were busy you know, trying to pass that test, you guessed at the answer or whatever down at the DMV. And same thing with these religious conversions. 
You didn't believe in whatever you were before in the first place, but you do like getting laid, and if she tells you you're going to have to become whatever religion her family's in, her family is, you're going to do that. And you don't believe in what she believes either. You really don't care. Yeah, okay, yes. Yes, I'm a Presbyterian. Absolutely, I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. And the same thing is true about marriage, by the way. We've all bought this um, idea that you grow up and you're supposed to get married. I bought it. I'm not saying I was immune. Are you kidding? I, I bought it four times. Bought it and sold it. <laughs> bought it again. I bought it because my parents were married for 40 years. I thought that's what people did. And when my marriages didn't work out, I thought to myself, I'm a screw up. There's something wrong with me. Now, I'm not gay, and I don't have a problem with people who are gay, but I want to compare this because I know lots of people who are gay. Let's take it into this realm, okay? How many people out there who are gay today believe they were straight? And so they had girlfriends. You know, guys were gay. They had girlfriends. Maybe they got married. Maybe they had kids. And they were not happy. And they kept saying, it's something wrong with me. Right? And then one day they just say, wait a minute. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm gay. That's all it is. I shouldn't be getting married and having children because I'm gay. Okay? I kind of came to that conclusion as a straight male who bought into the marriage lie. I always thought when I got married, there was something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. There's something wrong with the idea of getting married. And the reason I got married, for all of you who keep asking, when you get married, why did you get married for? Because my parents were married, and they stayed married. And when I couldn't stay married, I saw it as my personal failure not to do what they did. And like an idiot, I just thought, well, I'm I'm stubborn. I'm just going to keep doing this until I get it right. I was an idiot. And the reason the people in Ask Amy are getting married is because they've been told that's what they're supposed to do. Not because it's good, for, especially for him. Not because they need to do it. You don't need to get a marriage license to have sex anymore. I mean, think about it. It's called a marriage license. You couldn't just have sex without a license. You couldn't. You couldn't have kids without a license. No. You needed a license. Like you need a driver's license. You had to go down uh, to the local, uh, you know, whatever the city uh, or county office was, and you had to fill out paperwork and give them money, and you had to be licensed to do those things. Well, guess what? You don't have to be licensed to do them anymore. These two who wrote in to ask Amy, they're having sex right now. They may even be living together. You don't need a license to go have it anymore. You know, in Arizona, I lived in Maricopa County back in the 80s. Do you know the law in the 1980s in Maricopa County, Arizona? Cohabitation illegal. And when I was doing my radio show at the time, I moved my girlfriend in with me and I defied them to put me in jail. They didn't. But it was illegal. The point is, all this stuff, getting married, uh, uh, living together, having babies, having sex, you needed a license to do those things. And even though we still have marriage licenses, you know, marriage licenses have about the value of a dog license. How many of you have a dog license? Come on. How many of you have gotten a ticket for their dog not being licensed? Don't, please, the three of you don't call in, all right? Stop. And the bottom line is most of us don't get dog licenses or cat licenses. And most of us, we don't need marriage licenses any more than you need a dog license. You just don't. So the bottom line, if I were talking to the two people who wrote into the Ask Amy column in the Chicago Tribune, syndicated to newspapers throughout the country, like the Los Angeles Times here in Southern California where I'm sitting right now, the bottom line is that uh, you don't have to get married. There's nothing in it for you. What is the, You're not religious, so you don't buy into that hook, line, and sinker. Why would you buy into this? You don't need to do it. Do you? You don't. 
Am I wrong? Tom Likas. Really? 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. <laughs> Screw this other stuff. Just talk about sex. Oral sex. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. We are at 1-800-5800-TOM. Seriously speaking, are there any reasons why we need to, uh, to get married? Um, that was a question that was sent into the Ask Amy column. And I'd like to find out what you think at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello to Nate on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Right on. Good to hear it. Uh, you know, I was just uh, listening to you before the last break, and I just I thought it was pretty interesting. You drew a parallel between, uh, you know, needing a license to drive with a marriage license. Right. And isn't it funny how kind of, like, even with driving, there's some preparation required to get licensed. You have to take, you know, driver's ed and driver's training and have a certain amount of, you know, hours behind the wheel and be familiar with, you know, the rules and regulations of the uh, state in which you live. Yet with marriage, like, there's no <laughs> there's no screening process or, like, preliminary training required. So you've got people who get married who don't know how to raise kids, and they might be totally, you know, codependent and emotionally screwed up and not really be in the, you know, the capacity to maintain a healthy relationship, yet they can get licensed, you know, with, without any, any credibility to begin it's with. It's absolutely true. You don't need any qualifications. All you need is whatever it is, the 70 or $80 it takes now to get a marriage license. That's it. And then the divorce rate's just, what is it, like 60% or something like that? It's something crazy. It's out of control. So why do it in the first place? <laughs> no, that's what I've been telling people for years. Yeah, it's a trip, man. I mean, I guess some people need the, you know, the symbolism of it, I, I guess. I don't know. Somehow it kind of makes the commitment more set in stone, but I just, I can't see any reason to do it without, a, you know, prenuptial agreement if you absolutely have to do it, you know. No, it makes no sense at all. I, I just simply don't get it. But shouldn't, I mean, don't you think there should be some sort of, like, training, marriage training or, like, you know, child rearing? Well, training? whether there should be and whether there is are two different things. Right. Right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 let's face it. We we don't require people to uh, to study up to have children. We don't require people to study up to do all kinds of important things. Right. Like getting married and giving attorneys lots and lots of money? Oh, <laughs> you don't need training for that. Right. It makes no sense, man. Not at all. Cool. Well, By the way, I'm looking at the us. screen here. I don't see any, any women calling it. It's all guys. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. So when you try to get a woman to uh, call in and say something logical, good luck to you. Yeah, right. All right. Cool. Totally Thanks outrageous. Lot, Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. No women on the line, but we do have Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's up? Not much, Dave. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. I have to apologize to you, though. Why? Because I haven't learned my lesson yet. What'd you do? I'm married again. Why did you do that? Because it was just so good. And I thought I had to have it forever. Six what was so? Now. Wait, wait. What was so good? I, I can't say that on a radio, Tom. Come on now. Oh, you mean the sex was so good? Well, that and some other things, yeah. But I'm on number six. See, that's what the problem is. All right, you're on number six. Number six. How much 47. is this? Seven. By the way, how much does this cost you? Uh, do I really have to tell you? Yes, I would like to know if you have any idea. Ballpark figure, I'd like to know. Ballpark figure, no BS, honestly, probably a little over a million. A million dollars? All combined. I'm not saying just one of them. All of them combined, the last five. I understand. Been... Was it worth a million dollars? <laughs> no, not really. So why do you keep doing it? I don't know. I, you know, I heard what you said. When you started the show, you said you were convinced that this was the right thing to do. Your parents did it. They stayed married forever. And so you kept doing it because you were getting it wrong. So you had to get it right. There has to be a right formula. There has to be some sort of algebra equation that would allow it to work. 
you just have to find the right person. But I'm getting ready to go through my sixth divorce, and I'm thinking that maybe there's no equation. And at 47, I, I think I'm done now. And you think you're done? Wait, 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 wait! Okay. You uh, think I'm you're sorry, done? I rephrase. I'm done. I'm done. I swear. I mean, don't I'm, you control? You know what? Don't you control yourself? I I took control. You know what? <sighs> it it's taken me this long to like actually figure it out and you know what i've listened to you for years i i lived in phoenix i used to live in levine if you know where that is i do and uh you know back in the 80s i lived there i heard you on the radio there when you were talking about they you, you dared the cops to arrest you i remember those shows i remember uh -huh. those shows mm -hmm. and i told myself wow this is just funny this is all entertainment what a great show what great entertainment this is Oh, yeah, let's go get married, baby. Vegas, two-hour, three-hour drive. Let's go. It's over. Me and you forever. doesn't work that way. I'm on six. I'm getting ready to end six. And that, I guess, it took me, it's taking me to my sixth one to figure that out. How, much, how, no, much, is, how much is this divorce costing you? Um, right now, we just got started. And actually, well, we got started about four months ago. So just got started is kind of relative term, I guess. But... Um, right now, I'm probably about 50k into my attorney. She's about 50k into her attorney. Of course, the money is all mine, so I'm 100k into attorneys right now. Um, originally, initially, I guess I should say, uh, was supposed to be an equitable resolution to our dissolution of marriage. However, about two, three months down the road, and a lot of girlfriends of hers going out and partying and telling her giving her advice she's decided now she doesn't want an equitable or a uh, you know a, a, a they good never resolution. do haven't you learned after six times here's what happens she talks to you about it and she says if you're fair to me that's fine i don't care i don't want to make this any messier than it has to be then she goes to the attorney's office the attorney says are you kidding do you know how much you could get and so all of a sudden, she starts telling you, well, I want something fair. This isn't fair. What you're offering isn't fair. It's not fair. And the agreement you thought you had goes right out the window. No, you're, you're right. I'm not arguing with you, Tom. I'm an idiot. I'm dumb. I know it. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm praying that some young man out there, and I consider anything younger than me a young man, I'm praying and hoping that some young man out there will hear what I'm saying and will look over at the girl that he thinks he wants to spend the rest of his life with and go, hmm, you're nice to bang. I can say that on the radio, right? Yes. You're nice, you're nice to bang. You look good. And, you know, it, it's been real fun, but uh, I think I want to bang Susie now. See, if I would have lived what I've listened to you say for years, I probably could retire right now. And you've been listening to me for over 20 years. Over 20 years, my friend. I'm just, I, I don't learn. I, you know what my problem is? Here's what my problem is. I get tied up with a woman, and she tells me everything I want to hear, and I think it's different this time because she said the same thing, but she says it differently. And she blinks her eyes in such a way that I've never seen before, and, man, that beautiful, soaring you know, morning sunrise sex and all that. It's all great. But then once the ring's on, and once the license has been granted, things start changing. My only saving grace, and, and I don't really want to say that this is a saving grace. I have three beautiful children by their first mother. I never had any other children with any of my other wives. But I've got three beautiful children from my first wife. And... Those kids are my life, and they and they love me. They 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 support every decision I make, whether they agree with it or not. They support it, and trust me, there have been a lot of disagreements because there's been a lot of women. A but million dollars, day over over a million, Tom, over a million. And once I'm done with this one, it's probably going to be close to two. And if you look at that two million bucks over a twenty year twenty twenty five twenty six year time frame. If I would have just had even half of that into any stock or bond or oil company, I, 
that I could have retired by now, man. I'd be living somewhere in the Bahamas banging hot babes all the time. But now I'm dealing with my last and final, and this will be my last and final. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a sharp guy when it comes to chicks. And uh, I've learned my lesson, though. I'm done. I'm done with marrying women. There is no good thing that comes about it. It's only caused me money, pain, and mental anguish. Just bang them, young men. Don't marry them. They're not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm sure that there's a lot of guys out there that disagree. I'm sure, well, I'm positive there's quite a few women that disagree, and I, I beg one woman to call now and argue my point and say that I'm wrong. I beg it, but it's not going to happen. You know why? Because I'm right. You're right. They know it. And the chicks that call that do know it have intelligent things to say on your radio station like, I just want to bang him. I don't want to marry him. Those are the women I need to meet. The women I've been meeting are the ones that go, oh, look at this guy. He's got a little money. He's got a little dough. He's got some nice house, nice cars. Oh, look at that boat. Oh, Harley, i got to have this guy. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And I, I know, Tom, you can berate me, please. I, I, I hope you do. I've made dumb decisions when it comes to women. And you're sure you're not going to do it again? I am... I don't know how to tell you how sure I am that I'm not going to do it again. It's not happening again. This last one is uh, – none of them have been fun, but this one is – It's this one's the worst. This is the worst. She wants everything. She wants all the money that I'm making now. She wants all the money that I'm going to make in the future. I own my own company, so she wants half of that. She wants half of everything that I make until the day I die. And you have more now, even after that million plus you've spent, you have more now than you ever had before. So there's more for her to take. Much more. And, uh, you know, it's. <laughs> I wish there were other options. You know, I heard a story the other day about some guy, and I don't know if it's true or not, some guy that took and kidnapped his girlfriend, took her over the border to Mexico, dropped her off with the hopes that she'd never come back. I, you know, I was kind of hoping that I could get that guy's number and I'd pay for his airfare to take mine over to oh, Pakistan yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had, um, I'm not going to say who or what country, but I had one one time who started getting into that sense of entitlement. Sense of entitlement, sense of entitlement. Uh, what she didn't have was a green card. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had that scenario right and now. And I said, I'll tell you what. You go ahead and have a press conference or anything you want to have, but you know what I'm doing? I'm calling up the INS, <laughs> and I am telling them what you have been up to here. And it's not going to matter what you say in your press conference about me, because you are not going to be here anymore. And that was the end of that, I'm sure, right? That pretty much, yeah, that pretty much ended the debate right there. I, I swear, and uh, believe me, I, I wouldn't think twice. Let me just say this for any non-American women that I might date in the future who don't have papers, I won't hesitate to turn your ass in and have you kick the hell out of this country if at some point along the way you decide to become an American woman and you decide to try to claim everything. I won't do it. I won't hesitate to do it. I will kick you out. I will use every legal means at my disposal to get you disposed of. Oh, I wish that was an option for me, Tom. God, I wish that was an option. But, as I said, never again. I'm done. I, I, I Granted, it, it took me six times, and I'm getting up in age, but I still have all my hair. I don't need Viagra. And uh, I'm still a fit guy, and I'm noticing, and this is really cool, because the first month or two, I kind of sat at home and droped and moaned and whined and said, oh, poor me. And then a couple buddies said, that's it. We're done. We're tired of you being like this. It's time to get back to the old days. Let's go out. One night out, the first night out, rather, we take me to this club. I'm down. I'm bombed. Uh, I'm not in a good mood. I'm sure I don't look approachable to any woman. 
But that first night out, I danced with 15, 20 different women that asked me to dance. Of course, my buddies were helping out and saying, hey, you got to go get that guy. You have to guy to dance. He's down. You know, the, 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 I had the little buddy wingman action going on there, so that helped. But the first night out, I danced with so many beautiful women, so hot. One of them took me home to her house and haven't spoke to her since. That was good. Months ago. Keep that up. Hang on a second. Kyrie, what did you want to say here to Dave? I mean, it, it, you're killing it, man. You, you're six times. Come on, bro. I mean, I, uh, it, it usually just takes one, one, two, maybe tops. Tom, I'm sorry, dude, you, four, but this guy, six, and he's cost you millions of dollars, dude. I'm, I'm sorry, a million dollars per year? No, a million total between the six the marriages. First, no, 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 and all my, of them, yes. All the first them. five marriages, because he doesn't know how much number six is going to cost. I, I, yeah, oh, I don't man, know what this it, one's going to be. But then, but then the crazy thing is you come with the stories of of, uh, of hanging out with all these hot chicks and meeting them all. But just say no, man. Just say, you cut. look, grab the pen knife. Right, go ahead, go ahead and get it out to out your desk drawer and carve out your heart, because uh, just you put it up the day. Only time that it should come out, like the dead man's chest, it's for kids. Uh, just to, you, you're killing it, bro. I mean, I understand the compassion for your story, but that you love women and this, that, and the other. But I wish I had a million dollars, and uh, that, believe me, they women would not be getting it, bro. I wish I had the back. You're right. I don't have all right, Dave, we're losing you. Dave Kyrie, thank you so much for the calls. We appreciate them. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's my boy. Tom Likas. Hey. I waited on hold all this time to hear that I'm lousy in the sack. The Tom Likas Show. Yes, boys and girls, it's the Tom Likas Show. I want 800 5800 Tom. We're talking about the Ask Amy advice column. It's so quaint, it appears in. Ever heard of these? Newspapers. Yes. Yes, I know. That thing that used to come to your grandparents' front door, the newspaper. They used to have the delivery kid used to throw it at the door. Remember that? Yeah. Apparently, there's still people who read these. I can't imagine how how old they must be by now, but apparently, the Pony Express is still delivering the newspaper to, to somebody's front door. And um, the Ask Amy column, which appears in newspapers, for all you fossils and dinosaurs out there, um, there are two people, 27 years old, I guess the grandmother showed in the newspaper. Kids, this is a newspaper. And they wrote into the Ask Amy column saying, well, we're engaged to be married, but we're wondering why do it? We're not religious. Um, we intend to stay together forever, but we don't believe in staying together if it's not good, so we'll get divorced if it doesn't work out. So what's the point? Makes sense to me. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Beth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, well, I'm calling about the guy that, you know, you were just speaking to that was married um, six times and burned every time. And I have a – my take on it is that, you know, he, he needs to own up and, and um, to some of the responsibility. I mean, he What responsibility? To, well, I mean – Women don't fall for people that don't encourage them. I think that, you know, he had to encourage these women to fall for him and marry marry him. That's not the issue. The fact is, and by the way, I, I blame him. I don't blame anybody else. And I think he blames himself. But for whatever reason, he, probably like me, was raised to believe that this is what adults do. And so he did it. Well, I mean, he ke he keeps trying. Obviously, he likes something. Well, about because, being like I said, no, I don't think that's necessarily true. He probably, like I, said when a marriage failed, it's because of a failing within me. And right. so he, like me, 
went out and did it again and believed that it's just a matter of, you know, if he does it right, you know, ultimately he will be, uh, uh, you know, he'll be richly rewarded with that wonderful life his parents or his grandparents had. Right. Well, I, I understand that, and I also the reality think- is that marriage has expired. It's done. It's toast. Right. Well, I don't disagree with that. I think he probably should never be married again. But I, I also think that um, you know, men should need to be honest with women right up front. If, honest if about man, what? If a man would come, you know, clean to a woman. Wait, 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 wait. Stop. Honest about what? About not wanting a relationship, like just saying, I'm in it for the sex. But and wait a minute, it. wait and a minute, but there is an in-between. There are people who want to have a relationship who don't want to sign a contract. Okay, well, why not say that? Because? I mean, well, women he, will, will either stay in or not stay in a relationship if, if somebody is honest and upfront about it and says that. Well, I say if you don't ever intend to uh, get married, just date people, and then when they get tired of it, they want, quote-unquote, a commitment, let them go down to the IT department and pluck Poindexter out and marry him. Well, after they've dated me. Well, I, I do. I, I agree with that. But I think a lot of women wouldn't even go the next step with a man if he if he was honest and just said, look, I, you know, relationships, long term relationships don't work for me. I'm in it for the now. And I think there are plenty of women that would go for that. Yeah, but dare, but even that- if the women would go for it, there's very few women who will cop to that, at least in the beginning, because of this fear women have of being branded as sluts. I've been there, and unlike you, I've dated women, and I've had the conversation. And if you try saying that to women, they run the other direction, even if they ultimately just want to get laid themselves. That could be true. That could so be true. the trick is you have to just simply date them. Don't get into the conversation. Right. Avoid the conversation for as long as possible. And then when they finally corner you, just say, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. And then they can decide to stay or go. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. I think that, but I listen to your show a lot and I hear a lot of men that, that I think probably encourage women to get in relationships and work really hard at it too. And then, you know, after it doesn't work out or something, you know, just act like they weren't in it for the, the relationship or they had nothing to do with encouraging the woman where, where in fact, you know, you have to agree, Tom, that they probably had a lot of responsibility in, in encouraging the re- relationship. Yeah, but they, they encourage the relationship and, because they believe, based on what women tell them, that the women won't have sex without a relationship. And the women say they won't have sex without a relationship because they don't want to be perceived as sluts. So what guys have to understand is pay no attention when a woman says she wants a relationship. A good example of this, we did a show recently about the fact that one-third of all women, all women on online dating services have sex on the first date. But if you read Match.com or Yahoo Personals or JDate or any of those, Mm -hmm. how many women are saying, looking to hook up, write to me now, they don't say they, they they have pictures of their puppy dogs and their kitty cats, pictures of sunsets. They talk about holding hands in the sun and making plans together. They don't say, haven't gotten laid in three months, thought I'd try online personals. <laughs> so guys believe what women are saying. Instead of realizing these women just feel like they couldn't admit that what they need is to get bone. Well, and women believe what men are saying too. I mean, it works both ways, Tom. It it does. Women. Believe well, I don't know what it is that men that women believe that men are saying because I'm a man. All I know is what men believe that women are saying. But I figured out somewhere in my adulthood that women frequently will say that they don't want to just have sex; they want a relationship. And then later on, you find out they would have just boned you for Christ's sake. The Tom Likas Show.